So you've got a dropping points at Old Trafford, at Tottenham, at home to Tottenham, wow, and away <laughs> at Aston Villa. But you also have Arsenal uh, dropping points at home to Villa and away at Tottenham. But Keeley, you have Manchester City dropping points down on the south coast there with Brighton and Tottenham away on the rearranged game. So if we look at that, you have Liverpool picking up 21 more points. <laughs> Arsenal well done, picking sorry. up 23 more points. This is tight. Rob, and what do you call City, Sue? City. Uh, <laughs> the voice up. of reason? Yeah, the voice of reason. Yeah. So, uh, Sue, talk us through your thinking there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be allowed back home <laughs> after this prediction. Do you know what? It's so hard to predict the games. We, we did it separately, didn't we? Yeah. And you look at the games and you think, well, there's going to be a loss in there somewhere, but it's so difficult to predict where the loss could potentially be. I just thought, looking at Liverpool, away at Manchester United, at Old Trafford, I just thought the, the rivalry between the two sides, could that be a, a chance for Manchester United to... You, you didn't say that against Everton, though. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I watched them on Saturday, that's why. Right. <laughs> and then, obviously, we know, you know what Tottenham can do to teams. Aston Villa, how Unai Emery is so tactically astute. So, they were sort of my reasonings where they could potentially drop points. But you don't... They could go on a... You know, an un un incredible run and, and win all of the games. And again, I've done the Aston Villa thing for, for Arsenal um, and Tottenham as well, just because of, of the way that they play, the way that both teams can cause, um, you know, the, the top sides problems. We saw at what Aston Villa can, can do to teams, what they did to, to Manchester City. Um, so I, w I still think, even though I've predicted all those, I still think Manchester City will win the league. But... You can't! <laughs> you can't! <laughs> Can we redo this graphic then? <laughs> but yeah, but when I predicted the results, obviously Liverpool have, yeah. have won the league. So Just there well, you go. The, the gap between Liverpool and Arsenal at the moment is two. Two. I've never. So been it's there. goal difference. Maybe. Perhaps between Liverpool and Arsenal then. Mm. Yeah, but Liverpool win that like one of the games six <laughs> <laughs> nil. Oh, so if it's oh, so it's goal difference. Okay. So I think Arsenal. Might win on goal difference. But you've just said City will win. That's why it's so hard. This is why it is so difficult it's... to do because you you could literally say a reason for each of the sides why they could potentially win the league, yeah. why they could potentially lose the league. So that's why it is so tight and why it makes it so exciting. I think that's what we've shown there. Yeah. It's a very open, exciting of course. title race. Yes, but absolutely. I, don't go home. No, I won't go home. No, you won't be welcome <laughs> no, there. No. Uh, right, let's have a look at. Stevens, uh, Liverpool to win them all and the rest to lose them all. No, it's not quite that. No. But you have Liverpool winning the title here, only dropping points at Tottenham and away at Villa, mm. whereas uh, Arsenal dropping points to Brighton, Chelsea, Tottenham. Uh, Chelsea's optimistic, having seen them on the weekend. And <laughs> City dropping points to Brighton and... Tottenham in the rearranged game. But what it does mean is 23 points for Liverpool in the running, 23 points for Manchester City, just 21 for Arsenal. So it would be Liverpool, City, Arsenal, yeah. top three. Sue's done all my explaining. <laughs> I'm, I rest my case. <laughs> I, I think Tottenham are going to have a massive say on this Premier League title yeah. race. I think they're the team that we're all looking at, saying fully fit squad, if they compete at the, the level that we know they can, yeah. they'll cause all the team's problems because, the, because of their quality. Uh, I think Villa away will be a tough one. I think I, I put actually, uh, where was it now? I was looking at the Villa game for Arsenal thinking, with John McGinn being back in, I think he brings them a bit, a bit of something different there. I think that could potentially be a tough game for them. Having seen Brighton at the weekend, I think Brighton are going to have a say on this title race. Mm. Um, that someone's going to lose somewhere, but it's very difficult to predict it. When you look at the, the way the teams have played and how many games they've actually lost between them, it's difficult to see where they're going to lose games. Um, but there's going, to be, there's going to be more points dropped. It's just one of those things where you're trying to predict it and you, you're, uh, you're going to get caught out at some point because there's, there's games that are going to throw things up. There's going to be sendings off. There's going to be... I mean, you look at Manchester City against Arsenal at the weekend and 
you, you lose Carl Walker, you lose John Stones. Yeah. Teams are going to lose players. My big reason for Liverpool being stronger is purely because out of the team that Liverpool played yesterday, Alisson's a starter, Canate's a starter, Trent Alexander-Arnold's a starter, Diogo Jota's potentially a starter, Curtis Jones, you would say, would be in and around that. It's five players to, that Liverpool have still got to come back who are going to be coming back in April at some point. Uh, I think it's Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, Canate was on the bench at the weekend, Alisson and... Curtis Jones will be back in training maybe this week or next week. That's a big addition yeah. to Liverpool's team. And you think of what they've been fighting on and how they've got the position they're in with all those injuries, that'll be interesting. I think City will be affected by Stones and Walker missing. Mm.